claw or umphenicol is an antibiotic useful for the treatment of a number of bacterial infections. This includes meningitis, plague, cholera, and typhoid fever. Its use is only recommended when safer antibiotics cannot be used. Monitoring both blood levels of the medication and blood cell levels every two days is recommended during treatment. It is available intravenously, by mouth, and as an eye ointment. Common side effects include bone marrow suppression, nausea, and diarrhea. The bone marrow suppression may result in death. To reduce the risk of side effects treatment duration should be as short as possible. People with liver or kidney problems may need lower doses. In young children a condition known as gray baby syndrome may occur which results in a swollen stomach and low blood pressure. Its use near the end of pregnancy and during breastfeeding is typically not recommended. Claw or umphenicol is a broad-spectrum antibiotic that typically stops bacterial growth by stopping the making of protein. Claw or umphenicol was discovered in 1947. It is on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines, the most important medications needed in a basic health system. It is available as a generic medication. The wholesale cost of an intravenous dose is about 0.40 to 1 US dollar and 90 cents. In the United States it is very expensive. Global issues relating to bacterial resistance have revived interest in its use. Medical uses The original indication of claw or umphenicol was in the treatment of typhoid, but the now almost universal presence of multiple drug resistant Salmonella typhi has meant it is seldom used for this indication except when the organism is known to be sensitive. Claw or umphenicol may be used as a second-line agent in the treatment of tetracycline-resistant cholera. Because of its excellent blood-brain barrier penetration, far superior to any of the syphilis porins, claw or umphenicol remains the first-choice treatment for staphylococcal brain abscesses. It is also useful in the treatment of brain abscesses due to mixed organisms or when the causative organism is not known. Claw or umphenicol is active against the three main bacterial causes of meningitis, Neisseria nittatis, Streptococcus pneumoniae, and Haemophilus influenzae. In the West, claw or umphenicol remains the drug of choice in the treatment of meningitis in patients with severe penicillin or cephalosporin allergy and general practitioners are recommended to carry intravenous claw or umphenicol in their bag in low-income countries the who no longer recommends oily claw or umphenicol as first line to treat meningitis Claw or umphenicol has been used in the U.S. in the initial empirical treatment of children with fever and hepatochial rash, when the differential diagnosis includes both Nstriamina nitatus septicemia and Rocky Mountain spotted fever, pending the results of diagnostic investigations. Claw or umphenicol is also effective against Enterococcus faecium which has led to its being considered for treatment of ancomycin-resistant enterococcus. The drug should be discontinued upon appearance of reticulocytopenia, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, anemia, or any other abnormal blood study findings attributable to claw or umphenicol. Spectrum of Activity Claw or umphenicol has a broad spectrum of activity and has been effective in treating ocular infections caused by a number of bacteria including Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pneumoniae, and Escherichia coli. It is not effective against Pseudomonas aeruginosa. The following susceptibility data represent the minimum inhibitory concentration for a few medically significant organisms. Is Cherokee coli, 0.015 to 10,000 grams slash ml Staphylococcus aureus, 0.06 grams slash ml, greater than 128 grams slash ml Streptococcus pneumoniae, 
2 to 16 grams slash ml. Each of these concentrations is dependent upon the bacterial strain being targeted. Some strains of E. coli, for example, show spontaneous emergence of claw or umphenical resistance. Resistance Three mechanisms of resistance to claw or umphenical are known. Reduced membrane permeability, mutation of the 50S ribosomal subunit, and elaboration of claw or umphenical acetyl transferase. It is easy to select for reduced membrane permeability to claw or umphenical in vitro by serial passage of bacteria, and this is the most common mechanism of low level claw or umphenical resistance. High level resistance is conferred by the CAT gene. This gene codes for an enzyme called claw or umphenical acetyl transferase, which inactivates claw or umphenical by covalently linking one or two acetyl groups, derived from acetyl ESCO enzyme A, to the hydroxyl groups on the claw or umphenical molecule. The acetylation prevents claw or umphenical from binding to the ribosome. Resistance conferring mutations of the 50S ribosomal subunit are rare. Claw or umphenical resistance may be carried on a plasmid that also codes for resistance to other drugs. One example is the ACIT plasmid, A equals ampicillin, C equals claw or umphenical, CO equals cotrimoxazole, T equals tetracycline which mediates multiple drug resistance in typhoid, also called R-factors. Currently, some Enterococcus fsium and Pseudomonas aeruginosa strains are resistant to claw or umphenical. Some Valinella SPP and Staphylococcus capitis strains have also developed resistance to claw or umphenical to varying degrees. Adverse Effects of Plastic Anemia the most serious side effect of claw or umphenical treatment is a plastic anemia. This effect is rare and is generally fatal. No treatment is available and no way exists to predict who may or may not get this side effect. The effect usually occurs weeks or months after treatment has been stopped, and a genetic predisposition may be involved. It is not known whether monitoring the blood counts of patients can prevent the development of a plastic anemia, but patients are recommended to have a baseline blood count with a repeat blood count every few days while on treatment. 18. Claw or umphenical should be discontinued if the complete blood count drops below 2.5 by 10 cells. L. The highest risk is with oral claw or umphenical affecting 1 in 24,000 to 40,000, and the lowest risk occurs with eye drops, affecting less than 1 in 224,716 prescriptions. Thiamphenigal, a related compound with a similar spectrum of activity, is available in Italy and China for human use, and has never been associated with a plastic anemia citation needed. Thiamphenicol is available in the US and Europe as a veterinary antibiotic, but is not approved for use in humans. Bone marrow suppression, claw or umphenical may cause bone marrow suppression during treatment. This is a direct toxic effect of the drug on human mitochondria. This effect manifests first as a fall in hemoglobin levels which occurs quite predictably once a cumulative dose of 20 grams has been given. The anemia is fully reversible once the drug is stopped and does not predict future development of a plastic anemia. Studies in mice have suggested existing marrow damage may compound any marrow damage resulting from the toxic effects of claw or umphenigal. Leukemia, leukemia a cancer of the blood or bone marrow, is characterized by an abnormal increase of immature white blood cells. The risk of childhood leukemia is increased, as demonstrated in a Chinese case controlled study, and the risk increases with length of treatment. Gray baby syndrome, 
Intravenous claw or infinical use has been associated with the so-called gray baby syndrome. This phenomenon occurs in newborn infants because they do not yet have fully functional liver enzymes, that is UDP glucurin transferase, so claw or infinical remains unmetabolized in the body. This causes several adverse effects, including hypotension and cyanosis. The condition can be prevented by using the drug at the recommended doses, and monitoring blood levels. Hypersensitivity reactions, fever, macular and vesicular rashes, angia edema, urticaria, and anaphylaxis may occur. Herxheimer's reactions have occurred during therapy for typhoid fever. Neurotoxic reactions, headache, mild depression, mental confusion, and delirium have been described in patients receiving claw or infinical. Optic and peripheral neuritis have been reported, usually following long-term therapy. If this occurs, the drug should be promptly withdrawn. Pharmacokinetics, claw or infinical is extremely lipid-soluble, it remains relatively unbound to protein and is a small molecule. It has a large apparent volume of distribution and penetrates effectively into all tissues of the body, including the brain. Distribution is not uniform, with highest concentrations found in the liver and kidney, with lowest in the brain and cerebrospinal fluid. The concentration achieved in brain and cerebrospinal fluid is around 30 to 50 percent of the overall average body concentration. Even when the meninges are not inflamed, this increases to as high as 89% when the meninges are inflamed. Claw or infinical increases the absorption of iron. Use in special populations, claw or infinical is metabolized by the liver to claw or infinical glucurinate, which is inactive. In liver impairment, the dose of claw or infinical must therefore be reduced. No standard dose reduction exists for claw or infinical in liver impairment, and the dose should be adjusted according to measured plasma concentrations. The majority of the claw or infinical dose is excreted by the kidneys as the inactive metabolite, claw or infinical glucurinate. Only a tiny fraction of the claw or infinical is excreted by the kidneys unchanged. Plasma levels should be monitored in patients with renal impairment, but this is not mandatory. Claw or infinical 6 tester, an intravenous predrug form, is readily excreted unchanged by the kidneys, more so than claw or infinical base, and this is the major reason why levels of claw or infinical in the blood are much lower when given intravenously than orally. Claw or infinical passes into breast milk, so should therefore be avoided during breastfeeding, if possible. Dose monitoring Plasma levels of claw or infinical must be monitored in neonates and patients with abnormal liver function. Plasma levels should be monitored in all children under the age of 4, the elderly, and patients with renal failure. Because efficacy and toxicity of claw or infinical are associated with a maximum serum concentration, peak levels, one hour after the intravenous dose is given, should be 10 to 20 micrograms slash ml with toxicity greater than 40 micrograms slash ml, trough levels, taken immediately before a dose, should be 5 to 10 micrograms slash ml. Drug Interactions Administration of claw or infinical concomitantly with bone marrow depressant drugs is contraindicated, although concerns over a plastic anemia associated with ocular claw or infinical have largely been discounted. Claw or infinical is a potent inhibitor of the cytochrome P450 isoforms CYP2C19 and CYP3A4 in the liver. Inhibition of CYP2C19 causes decreased metabolism and therefore increased levels of, for example, antidepressants, antiepileptics, proton pump inhibitors, 
and anticoagulants if they are given concomitantly. Inhibition of CYP3A4 causes increased levels of, for example, calcium channel blockers, immunosuppressants, chemotherapeutic drugs, benzodiazepines, esol antifungals, tricyclic antidepressants, macrolide antibiotics, SSRIs, statins, cardiac antiarrhythmics, antivirals, anticoagulants, and PT5 inhibitors. Drug antagonistic, CLAW or Infinicol is antagonistic with most cephalosporins and using both together should be avoided in the treatment of infections. Mechanism of Action CLAW or Infinicol is a bacterial static by inhibiting protein synthesis. It prevents protein chain elongation by inhibiting the peptidyl transferase activity of the bacterial ribosome. It specifically binds to A2451 and A2452 residues in the 23S RNA of the 50S ribosomal subunit, preventing peptide bond formation. While CLAW or Amphenicol and the macrolide class of antibiotics both interact with ribosomes, CLAW or Amphenicol is not a macrolide. It directly interferes with substrate binding whereas macrolides sterically block the progression of the growing peptide. History CLAW or Infinical was originally derived from the bacterium Streptomyces venezuelae, isolated by David Gottlieb, and introduced into clinical practice in 1949, under the trade name Chloramycin. It was the first antibiotic to be manufactured synthetically on a large scale. The topical formulation of CLAW or Amphenical was commonly used as eye drops as first-line treatment of conjunctivitis. The first fatality from eye drops was reported in 1955. In 2007, the accumulation of reports associating aplastic anemia and blood dyscrasia with CLAW or Amphenical eye drops lead to the classification of probable according to World Health Organization criteria, based on the known published case reports and the spontaneous reports submitted to the National Registry of Drug-Induced Ocular Side Effects.